In this lesson, we will learn together what is the NQTT session, what problems it solves, and how we should choose the life cycle of the session. Let's look at the following scenario to illustrate the role of conversation better. Client A sends messages to the server, and then the server forwards them to client B. If the network connection between the server and client B is disconnected, the following situations will occur. First, both the messages being transmitted in the network and the messages awaiting delivery in the server will be lost. This means that we cannot guarantee the message arrival and the mechanisms of QoS 1 and 2, which are designed to ensure message delivery, become meaningless. Second, even though the connection between the server and client B has been disconnected, client A is unaware of this and continues to publish messages to the server. However, the server will discard these messages since they have no subscribers. Although client B will reconnect to the server after a certain period, it needs to resubscribe to the topics of interest to resume communication. Reviewing the issues mentioned above, the key problem lies in that essential data, such as messages that have been sent but not yet confirmed, messages awaiting delivery, and client subscriptions should not disappear along with the connection. We should store these data and keep them independent of the connection. And this is what the MQTT session does. Every time the client and server establish an MQTT connection, they must create a new session or resume communication from an existing session. Both the client and the server store all the state data generated within the connection in the session. This includes undelivered messages, the client's subscription list, and more. This allows the client and server to seamlessly resume communication in the next connection, as if the disconnection never occurred. The session has its own life cycle. We can make it spam multiple network connections like this. We usually refer to such sessions as persistent sessions. We can also make the session last only as long as the network connection, which means that the session state will be discarded when the network connection is disconnected. So the next time we connect, we have to create a brand new session. To ensure both parties can resume communication from the correct session state, the server and client also need to associate the session state with a unique identifier called the client ID. MQTT defines the session states that need to be stored for the server and the client. For the server, it needs to store the following. First, the client subscriptions, so that as long as the client reconnects before the session expires, there is no need to re-establish the subscription. And because the subscription still exists, even if the client is offline, the server can also cache incoming messages for it. Next, the server needs to store all the QoS 1 and 2 messages that have been sent to the client but have not been completely acknowledged, and the QoS 0, 1 and 2 messages waiting to be sent to the client. The latter includes messages that were not delivered in the last connection and new messages received while the client was offline. For QoS 0 messages, there is no mandatory requirement in the protocol, and the server may store them, or may not. Of course, most servers will provide an option for users to choose. These messages are queued within the session and will be delivered in the order they were received once the client reconnects. In addition to the messages sent to the client, the server also needs to store the QoS2 messages received from the client that have not been completely acknowledged. This ensures the QoS2 message flow can be resumed correctly after reconnection. Furthermore, to delay the delivery of the will message after the disconnection, the server needs to store the will message and the delay interval. There is a slight difference between MQTT 3.1.1 and 5.0. In 3.1.1, the will message is sent immediately upon disconnection, so it does not need to be stored as part of the session state. We'll learn more about will messages in the later lesson. Finally, if the disconnection lasts too long, the session may expire or be lost due to hardware or software failures. Therefore, the server also needs to store information about whether the session exists. When the client connects to the server, the server uses the client ID provided in the connect packet to retrieve the corresponding session state, then notifies the client through the session present field in the connect act packet whether it has reused the previous session. This allows the client and server to start communication on a correct basis. For the client, the session states that need to be stored are relatively minimal. They include the QoS 1 and 2 messages that have been sent to the server, but haven't been completely acknowledged, 
and the QoS2 messages received from the server that haven't been completely acknowledged. These states are similar to the server. MQTT provides two fields for sessions, namely clean start and session expiry interval, which are specified in the connect packet. Clean start indicates whether an existing session should be reused during connection. It only has two possible values, 0 and 1. If set to 0 when the client connects, the server must resume communication from the existing session associated with the specified client ID. If no corresponding session exists, the server should create a new session. If clean start is set to 1, even if there is a corresponding session between the client and server when connecting, it must be discarded and a new session must be created. The session expiry interval is used to specify the maximum duration for which the session can be maintained on the server after a disconnection. The server will discard the corresponding session state if the connection fails to be restored within the expiry interval. There are three typical values for the session expiry interval. Setting it to zero means that the session will end when the network connection is disconnected. Set to a value greater than zero to indicate the number of seconds after the connection is disconnected that the session will expire. Setting it to hex represented by 8FS, which is the maximum value allowed for the session expiry interval field, means that the session will never expire. Each client can set its own session expiry interval according to its requirements. For example, some clients may not need persistent sessions, while others may require sessions to be retained for a few minutes to mitigate the impact of network fluctuations. Some clients may need sessions to be retained for a longer period. MQTT also allows clients to reset the session expiry time when disconnecting, such as extending the expiry interval or canceling the persistent session. We can use these two fields very flexibly to meet our needs in actual scenarios. For example, if the client loses its session state due to a restart, it can specify clean start as one during a new connection, indicating the desire to start a new session. Or when we want the server to retain the client session state in case of abnormal disconnections due to network fluctuations, but end the session when the client gracefully disconnects after completing its business. In this case, we can set the session expiry interval to a value greater than zero when connecting and then update it to zero when disconnecting. It should be noted that the above discussion pertains to the session implementation in MQTT 5.0. Although MQTT 3.1.1 also has the session mechanism, it lacks the flexibility of version 5.0. MQTT 3.1.1 has only one field called clean session, which can only take two values, zero and one. Setting it to zero is equivalent to setting clean start to zero in MQTT 5, and the session being set never to expire. Setting it to one is equivalent to setting clean start to one in MQTT 5, and the session lifecycle aligns with the network connection. In MQTT 3.1.1, we cannot set different session expiry intervals for different clients, nor can we update the session expiry time when a client disconnects. This leads to those clients who only need to keep the session for a short time, and their session will also be stored on the server for a long time, resulting in resource wastage. For example, in many cases, we use persistent sessions to prevent message loss due to brief network interruptions. However, if a client hasn't logged in for a long time, such as two or eight hours, the stored messages on the server may become outdated. In MQTT 5, we can specify clean start as one and the server, will discard the old one and start a new persistent session. However, in MQTT 3.1.1, if we set clean session to one to discard the previous session on the server, this also means that we won't be able to use persistent sessions for this connection. If we don't want this, we must specify clean session as zero and connect again, which is quite inconvenient. Now let's summarize when we need to use persistent sessions and when we can do without them. First, if we don't want to miss any messages while offline, it is unquestionable that we should use persistent sessions. Second, if we don't want to lose QoS1 and 2 messages, we should also use persistent sessions. Third, if we want to avoid re-establishing subscriptions every time we connect and aim for quick communication restoration upon connection, we need to use persistent sessions. Fourth, if our low-power devices need to enter sleep mode regularly, 
don't want to maintain connections for extended periods, and don't want to perform subscription operations upon each wake-up, we can utilize persistent sessions to meet this requirement. Next, the scenario that does not require persistent sessions. If our client only publishes QoS0 messages without receiving any messages, we don't need to use persistent sessions. And if our client only subscribes to QoS0 messages and doesn't care about messages during offline periods, we can also do without persistent sessions. That's all for this lesson. In the next lesson, we will learn about the protocol flows of the three CoS levels in NQTT and the principles behind their different message quality.